giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, fun fans, and welcome to the pilot show of the first ever fun FRC fight night. We have a very interesting topic this evening. Which championship is better, Detroit or Houston champs? Reporting live for first updates now, I am your host, Connor McBride. Our producer tonight is the one and only Tyler Olds. Before we introduce our wonderful guest tonight, let's bring on Tyler to talk a little bit how a member of our live audience can win an Amazon gift card. Yeah, apparently my cam's dead, but I'll jump in. And uh, we are going to, uh, near the end of the show, we're going to do uh, bring back our uh, trivia. It is going to be uh, a little bit FRC themed and a little bit uh, uh, science-y themed, maybe a little Star Wars in between as well, too. Uh, so our current bank is up to $15 in Amazon gift cards. So if you're interested in playing, later on during the show, we'll let you know. Um, you can join the call-in channel queue on our fun Discord, and that's how uh, you can join in and then kind is going to uh, reach in, grab a random person out of the call-in channel queue on the FRC Discord, or fun Discord, I should say, uh, which link I'm going to put in the chat right now, and that's your uh, opportunity to win. Um, you're going to play uh, five questions, actually against Connor, who doesn't know what the questions are, by the way, um, and he's going to take off his headphones and stuff, and then we'll just like try to somehow get his attention so he comes back, but can't wait uh, for to do that. FRC Fight Nights tonight, guys. This is a new pilot show, by the way. We'd love to have your feedback afterwards. Let us know how we did uh, as we'll be looking. Uh, if we do run with this, it will be greenlit in May. So we'd love to get your feedback so we can continually make it better. Awesome. Thanks, Tyler. To debate tonight's subject, we have two hosts through first updates now. First, we have the showrunner of the Northeast Region Recap. Please welcome Audrey from 5254. Hey, how's it going, Audrey? Well, how about you? We're doing pretty good. And last but not least, we have one of the hosts from the Southeast Region Recap and mentor on 2655, Flying Platypi, Kristen Chong. Welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How are you? Awesome. This is how we're going to run tonight's show. We have five categories that our guests have prepared to talk about, all based on tonight's main topic. And the categories are location, location, location. You know, the venue, geographic location, with airports, hotels, depth of field, the competitiveness, food, outside activities for teams, and international presence slash diversity. We'll go a, more, a little bit more into depth as we approach each category. Each guest will have approximately three to five minutes per category followed with, with rebuttals. After each argument has concluded, I will assign a point to whoever believes who won. But wait, the audience gets to vote too. That's right, we will open up a poll for you, the viewers, to help decide who wins. We will also read off comments and questions from you, the audience, regarding the current topic. If you have anything to add, tag at first updates now along with your comment or question. Let's dive right in to Detroit versus Houston Champs. Topic number one is location. As we all know, traveling far distances is something we have is that most teams have to do to get to their respected championship location. Most teams fly to Champs and have to find a way to get there to and from the airport, hotels, and venue. First does offer discounted hotel uh, rates at select hotels, but there are definitely better options out there. What do you have for us, Audrey? Let's start off. Muted. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Am I good? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right, cool. So starting off, North Champs is located in the great city of Detroit, Michigan, or as the governor likes to call it, First City. It's got a population of about 6,700,000, 6, but more interestingly, Michigan has an FRC team population of 578. Detroit and Michigan are both great places. They're imbued by First, which makes it absolutely the perfect city to host the championship in. 
going off of just the sheer number of teams in Michigan, it makes travel for teams much shorter, not only within the state, but also outside of it. Uh, there's a map here, Tyler, if you could pull that up. It shows the average team travel time, uh, and most teams qualifying for Detroit are in the blue or the dark aqua here. Um, on top of that, rides from the airport to the formerly Kobo, now TCF Center, are only 20 minutes by car. Speaking of the TCF Center itself, this is an absolutely great place to host the World Championship. It's this really large, wide open convention center where they put all six fields head to head to head across the length, and then the pits behind those. This results in a wicked fast walk from the pits to the fields. And it's also super easy to slide over a field to watch, like, I don't know, 11, 14, and 2056 play a qual match together against 2767. In addition to all that, all the levels of first, so that means your FLL Junior, your FLL, your FTC teams, they're all on the same floor. Got a 10 minute break in between matches? Go say hi to your school's FTC team. Go watch the FLL kids run some programs or talk to FLL Junior kids about how they're gonna save the world. It's all right there. And I know we aren't going to be going to Ford Field for playoffs this year, but as a venue itself for the final set of matches, it really, it's an incredible atmosphere. I think the opportunity, being a week later than Houston, the opportunity to learn what goes right and what goes wrong with the previous one really shows at Detroit's Einstein finale. So all that, just some reasons why Detroit and the TCF Center are great and possibly the best location for the championships. But my favorite is probably just the atmosphere itself. Once you land in the airport, once you get into the city, there's signage everywhere. And every Uber and Lyft driver that we had knows that the championship is going on and you can feel that energy in the championship itself. It's kind of crazy, but I really do get why it's called First City. And that in itself is where Detroit blows Houston out of the water. All right, thank you, Audrey. What do you got for us, Kristen, for Houston? I was surprised you didn't mention the people mugger or the people mover or whatever, whatever you want to call the, uh, the train system in Detroit, but um, I guess Houston, you, you can't go wrong with being in the heart of where the Apollo missions really, really were hosted out of. You've got NASA right in your backyard. Um, normally, I would hate on Minute Maid because it was kind of bleh, but I'm really glad they got rid of that. Um, so I think that actually brings the Einstein finals up a notch because you get a lot better view from, from the stands. Speaking of uh, the stands, I... I have the, so I've been to both championships and I definitely feel like the layout of Houston makes it feel much more like a world's championship. It feels like a bigger, more grand venue. The stands are a little bit taller. Um, there's, you know, there's all this excitement going on. Um, and then you've got George R. Brown, which is kind of nice because everything is separated by floor. So it makes it really easy to figure out where you want to go. You've got your two high school, uh, your two high school programs, FRC and FTC on the bottom floor. And then you go up a floor, you're at the Innovation Fair. You go up another floor and you're in the first Lego League. It's, it, it's really easy to navigate. On top of that, you've got the lawn out front. So it's a really great place to have a picnic and enjoy your, your team lunch. Um, and uh, I feel like it's, it's a little easier to navigate George R. Brown than it is Kobo or, or whatever it's called now. Because <laughs> um, it doesn't feel quite like a maze. Uh, there also aren't any direct connected hotels for Kobo, and there are two or three of them for George R. Brown. I usually stay in the Marriott Marquis, and it's really nice to be able to roll out of bed and walk across the bridge, uh, and you're in the uh, in the convention center. Um, and they open that hotel up to, uh, up to teams. I don't see many teams staying there because it's the Marriott Marquis. But um, the just. I feel like Houston, is, in terms of an atmosphere, really nails the world. Uh, it comes the closest to St. Louis um, when it comes to atmosphere, in my opinion. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. All right. So now we're going to open up for rebuttals. So, Audrey, do you have anything else that you want to add to the location topic? Anything that you need to fight back against Kristen here? I mean, yeah, all of her points were completely valid, I think just to address the hotels thing. The hotels in Detroit are kind of grouped together. So I feel like teams can meet up more easily if they're doing strategy from the one seed or you're just bound to see more teams around just from that kind of area. 
All right. And what about you, Kristen? What do you got? Yeah, my So, Platypie usually stays in a much further away hotel, so you definitely see that. The teams that don't wind up staying near each other or near the near the, the conference center, you know, there's not as much interaction, but you do have the lawn out front, and just about everyone goes out there during lunchtime. Um, so you still get a lot of that interaction kind of during during the off hours. Um, then there's the big giant, you know, welcome party that they throw um, on the first day that happens out there on the lawn. They've got music. They've got food trucks. Uh, there's all kinds of really great restaurants. We'll talk about food in a little bit. Um, but the, I, like I said, the, the Houston Convention Center definitely nails the, the world's kind of atmosphere um, a little bit better than Detroit does. All right. So it sounds like a lot of stuff is pretty close, uh, compact in Houston. Uh, what we're going to do right now, guys, we are going to open up the poll in the Twitch chat. So you will see that in the top of your screen of who wins this category. You'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to vote for Detroit or Houston. You have about two minutes uh, to cast your vote. And while we do that, I will go back through my notes. Just brushing up here, so seeing that NASA is right there in the backyard for Houston, a lot of hotels within walking distance, which is a huge thing because, you know, renting cars, I guess, or even taking other public transportation, that can rack up dollars on teams with low income or students who have to pay for that as well. Uh, where I do like Detroit, uh, it sounds like you got some very fast, you got uh, fast walks from the pit to the field. Uh, Calling that first city, that sounds pretty cool as well. Great atmosphere. And then, but also just bouncing back to Houston, where Kristen, where you pointed out, where everything seems very, very compact together. You have FRC and FTC right there, and you just go up another level in the convention center, and there's just one more thing right there. So I think I'm going to hand a point over to Houston for round one. Uh, it seems, seems like a no-brainer right there for me. And while the poll continues, uh, Tyler, do we have any questions or any comments from chat? No questions. Awesome. So I, what's that? All right. So while we wait for this, uh, do you guys have anything more that you want to add for Houston or Detroit just for fun? funsies yeah for funsies i'm gonna plug nasa again because i'm a space nerd nasa all right all right Uber. so the pull all right <laughs> chat uh <laughs> yeah chat if you got if you guys have any questions or comments uh Ooh, please tag at first updates now in twitch chat uh we would love to hear what you guys are thinking and with that the poll yeah. has ended Oh, yeah. It looks like Houston takes the win with uh, 53 to 47%. So two points for Houston as we go into our second topic of the night. And that second topic is the depth of field. As we know, it's the world championship. Competition is very tough, but is one tougher than the other? Start us off with that, Kristen. So I think in Houston, it's really easy to forget just the, the depth of teams that there actually are because a lot of them tend to get overshadowed by 148, you have 254, you have all of the other California teams, Citrus Circuit, 1619, Upper Creek. Um, it's, it's really easy to get distracted by all of the extreme, you know, high tier teams, the, the top caliber teams. But if you really look at the team makeup, it goes to Houston, there's actually a good depth coming from all over the place. Um, so you've got um, Georgia and North Carolina have started to step up with some of their some of the more mid tier teams. Um, so there's there's a little more action going on there. Um, you've got your Florida teams like 179, um, 1902. Um, Mexico also brings several really good teams to the table. Um, you've got Panteras, you have Ghostbusters, um, you have Lambot. There's there there's a there's a list. Of... Then you've got PNW where you've got Bare Metal, you've got Mean Machine. Uh, there there are a good number of teams from PNW that that also make a pretty good show. Um, it's it's really easy to forget the swath of good mid tier teams from the rest of of. Um, from the rest of Houston. And of course, you've got all of the, the Texas teams. Texas always brings a really strong presence. 
Um, a lot of people tend to forget, you know, anyone other than 148 and 118, but there are a lot of really good teams like, um, like Spectrum. Um, 3005 usually has a pretty good uh, – there, there are a lot of good teams that tend to get forgotten. Oh, I was muted. All okay. right. <laughs> All right. Host mute. All right, Audrey, what do you got for, for, for our uh, depth of field here? Okay. So I'm just going to start out with some numbers. And this is from last year's championships events. Houston's average qual score was 66.4. Detroit's was 76.1. Rocket completion went up 8% in between weeks. Hab docking went up 18%, and average playoff score went from 89 to 91. Houston may have some big names at the top of theirs, like 1678, 254, but Detroit has more district teams, and that makes the level of play absolutely skyrocket. More district teams means higher caliber of mid-tier teams make it in. They add to the depth, and there's less waitlist spots. Detroit quals and playoff matches often end up being some of the most interesting matches of the year. Uh, if we look at the second picture I have here, um, looking at Caleb Sykes' analysis of Houston versus Detroit in terms of ELO, we can see that even the top of Detroit beats out Houston's top teams from this year. In addition to this, it makes playoff matches just plain interesting. At Houston, you can basically tell who's going to win the division from looking at the team list. Well, in Detroit, to put it one way, last season, no number one seed won their division. We had seeds two, two, three, four, five, and six head to Einstein. Um, and if that wasn't enough, in the coming year, Detroit will get two extra weeks of build season. Uh, we've already seen what they can do with the extra week of learning from Houston. Just imagine what tuning teams can make to their robot in the future. Right on. All right, so anything else that you guys want to throw in there? It, I feel like Detroit handily wins this one. Um, just from this past year and from years before, the OPR, ELO, no matter how you look at it, the teams at Detroit are just a little bit caliber above. I think it depends what you're looking at. If you're looking at depth of field and kind of overall competition, I think that's a good point. Um, but if you're looking at just the sheer strength of individual teams, um, I think think it's probably a little more difficult, like you said, to break above who's probably going to win. So that definitely adds a difficulty level to it for anyone outside of the, you know, elite tier. Um, so if you're looking at it from a difficulty perspective, I think Houston probably wins out. Um, if you're looking at depth of field in terms of a more kind of broad, you know, overall per team, uh, the story might be a little bit different. All right. And while uh, remember, chat, if you want to tag at First Updates now with, at, with any questions, comments about the current topic that we have, please do so. We would love to discuss them here while we wait for our poll, which has started. If you go to the top of the Twitch chat, if you're on computer, I don't know what it is for mobile, uh, you can check the current poll and you can cast your vote for who won, either Detroit or Houston. You have just a little under two minutes left to do that. So... From what I gathered here is that, yeah, you have a lot of really big name teams that go to Cal uh, California, that go to uh, the Houston, uh, most of those being California teams. So you've got like 971, 254, 1678, and then you have your, you have your Texas gang. You got 148, 118, you got Florida, 179, 180, and a lot of high caliber teams. And also I think from what I've seen over the past few years is the same suspects. Uh, through Houston as well. Whereas now I think about looking over at Detroit, a lot of different teams that, have, that we've seen over the years. Granted, we've seen the occasional uh, Techno Dogs, Cyber Knights, and Thunder Chickens and, and Strike Force. Um, but Audrey brings up a really good point that seeing that no number one seeds won their division, that just kind of shows you the caliber of depth through each division at the Detroit Championship. Uh, can it, it can be a complete shakeup. It could even be a number eight seed and potentially even win the entire championship. So uh, personally, I'm going to have to give this point over to Detroit. I think uh, Detroit brings a very, very high argument here. And do, Tyler, do we have anything from chat? 
No. All right. Uh, so looking at looking more at depth. Um, it, I mean, there's even like depth of defense as well. I guess you can. Uh, so mm. like. The, the like the yeah. big thing that I see a lot of New England teams is the big thing that I see. New England is super harsh on defense. I know in previous years when I've been to championship, if you see like a low scoring match, take a look at how many New England teams were in that were in that match. Chances are at, you got at least one or two. Um, I'm Typically not too, at too sure. 1073. At 1073, <laughs> 10 West Coast products, pneumatic wheels. I love you guys so much. I want a t-shirt. I mean, it you're kind also of, like three it, towns over from me, so like hit me up. It kind of lines up because you look at Houston and well, so I don't know. This year it was kind of debatable. There were some times where you saw a lot more defense played in Detroit, but not all of it was effective defense. Sometimes you're just chasing after you know the best team on the other side um, instead of actually going after the team who um, who's point contribution you can actually affect because some teams work really well around defense, others don't. Um, I mean, it's 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 definitely something you could stand to see a lot more of in Houston, but I think the defense you see in Houston is usually um, pretty well targeted. All right, we do have one thing from Doctor Pop Tart sixty six. He says, "I agree. Detroit has a deeper field, but in my opinion, it is that the best alliances at Houston are a tier above the alliances at Detroit." Uh, I can agree with this. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, champions but... when it was a thing. So, you know, Festival of Champions, champions for all time, you know. I, I, I miss Festival of Champions dearly. It was in my backyard. I could walk there. <laughs> um, but technically, it was 254, who's a Houston team. They were just in St. Louis because they wanted to be in St. Louis, and that's where all the other good teams went. So Right. I mean, they, they, also the they also had that luxury because being a Hall of Fame team, I don't know if that's still a thing, but they're able to choose which championship they get to go to as well. Um, but... Yeah, you, like take take a look at uh, twenty seven. I mean, twenty seventeen. That went to five finals match, five matches at the Festival Champions. Mm. And then <laughs> look at look at the Houston Alliance. You got two fifty four who didn't lose a match. And then the twenty nineteen. Um, look at look at that. I mean, you had Techno Dogs and Thunder Chickens, and Rembrandts versus. Um, Madtown, Graybots, and I forget who their who their third pick was, but uh, Houston would definitely have like the lights out performance there if they brought back Festival of Champions. But the depth between the two, uh, Detroit takes this one, and it looked like the audience agreed as well. Detroit taking another point, so we are now tied up two two, going into our third topic, which is probably my favorite topic of tonight. And you know it, I know it, everyone knows it. <laughs> Food is the best and I can't get enough of it as you probably already know. Uh, there are times at competitions where you have just a few minutes to grab a bite to eat and the food offered at the venue is your only option. But at the end of a long day, I love to go to a local joint uh, and sink my teeth into some food that just makes me wanna come back to the city just to have it again. Audrey, what do you got cooking up for us? So. I want to start out this section by saying that at the 2018 championship event in Detroit, I had the best sandwich I have ever eaten in my life from the concessions at Kobo. Never mind that it was preceded by five hours of scouting. It was amazing and it was the best sandwich ever. I have the receipt still, still because it was just that good. Just Second, tell me where this is because I need to know. <laughs> it was at like the, like, you know, like there's like things, like they're like refrigerators, but they're open. Yeah, and there's like, I know like what a those person are. standing by them. Yeah, they're like, con they're just like regular <laughs> concessions, but it was like this sandwich and it was like this honey wheat bread. And it was like turkey with like some sauce on it. It was so good. <laughs> Second, Olive Garden can and will deliver breadsticks to your midnight strategy meeting at your hotel complete with sauces. Absolutely incredible experience. Um, as for event food, <laughs> there are some options within TCF Center itself. Uh, there's regular concession food, which is a bit pricey, but what are you going to do? 
you might just end up getting the best sandwich of your life ever, but uh, that's on you. Uh, if you're not up for that, they have some really great food trucks outside, specifically one that I really liked was the Brass Kitchen truck with the crispy Brussels sprouts. It had like some lime sauce on it. It was really good. I'm getting hungry now. Wow. Um, but I didn't have time to try all the food trucks, so chat, please go ahead. If you were at Detroit, what was the best thing that you had for lunch? Uh, there's also a food court at the nearby GM Center, which my teams did not find but many have raved about on Cheap Delphi for their just range of options. Uh, some other rave reviews come from the pizza of the city, which sounds really good. And I've heard really great things about it. Like you go to Detroit and get the pizza. It's what you do. Um, there's also a slider place. It's five minutes down the venue, down the road from the venue that absolutely makes the trip really, really good sliders. Um, but the one thing that I think Detroit stands out for is the fabled rice party hosted by Team 870 Rice. They bring a rice cooker with them to the competition. They invite every team that they can get in contact with. They have a Discord uh, and they make rice. They just make a lot of rice and it's the oddest thing I have ever heard, but you know, high schoolers. Definitely worth checking out food-wise. That's it for Detroit. Uh, I'll, sure, all right. Uh, what, do you, what do you got for Houston, Kristen? <laughs> I'll start by saying that slider place, I, I'm arguing for Houston 100%, but that slider place is the best place ever. And if you haven't, then you need to go find it. The wait is like two hours long and it's so worth it. But Houston has Texas barbecue and nobody does barbecue like Texas does. Trust me, I live in North Carolina. We call vinegar barbecue. So you can get your best Texas brisket at just about any barbecue joint in the state or in the Houston area. Um, you've also got McAllister's there in the venue, so you're not just limited to the, the typical, you know, convention food uh, that you would normally get. Um, being on the supplier side, the Houston meals definitely, for, for volunteers slash VIPs, are definitely a very significant step above the ones in Detroit. The ones in Detroit are bland and meh, and I, I don't, eh. Houston wins 100%. Um, also, having food allergies, I tend to have a much easier time with what Houston does for food-wise for the volunteers than I do in Detroit. Not that Detroit doesn't accommodate, but the the you know nut-free options for desserts in Houston tend to be a little better than those in Detroit, which is usually limited to like cookies, um, which gets boring after four days. Um, but the 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 volunteer food and the VIP food definitely in, in Houston is the bomb.com compared to Detroit. Um, and, and that's, I mean, there's, there's plenty of other, if you're king age, there are a lot of really cool hole in the wall um, bars that you can go to that have a lot of really great local beer. Um, I love going back to Texas because I'm a Texan at heart and I love getting to go and, you know, enjoy all the same foods I used to enjoy. So call me biased, but Houston wins this one. You don't have a rice party. What are you doing? <laughs> but Texas barbecue. <laughs> um, those bo those both answer sound the bad. question. Yeah. The answer to the question from Sorcery and Beans. Where did you find sandwich in Kobo? I found it at the concession stand. And I want to go back to Champs just for that sandwich. So it's it just a regular me. concession stand, just regular concession stand sandwich. And like my scout lead and I both got like the same sandwich and they were both incredible. And what was on the sandwich? It was bread yeah. and <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Bread <laughs> nice. <laughs> Best sandwich ever. It's a bread. That's a meal fit for Einstein right there. <laughs> Sorry, bread. We've got a comment in the <laughs> chat. E Tan and yeah. Tan 101 says there's also a brewery location in Houston where you can pay for unlimited cream soda for the entire day. Yes, please sign me up. Where is this? <laughs> um, the the I love all the 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 restaurant options you have in in Houston. There's a lot of stuff within walking distance of the convention center, um, and there's you know food of all different types. There's also a Starbucks in the venue there's a starbucks in the hilton next to the venue 
and I'm pretty sure there's a third Starbucks somewhere else on that lawn, and I don't remember where it is. So there's like Starbucks galore, and just about everyone's running around, you know, with Starbucks coffee yeah. and frappuccinos and, and whatnot. It's not Dunkin' Donuts, so I don't care. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Got, Krispy gotta Kreme, keep man. Got to keep it real in New England with with Dunkin' Donuts. Um, All right. We also have another. Should we start the chat poll. Yes, we should. So Tyler, if you want to start yeah. that for us, please. You go into, if you, yeah, you're watching from Twitch, we do have a poll that Tyler just started. Uh, which event has the best food? You can choose either Detroit or Houston. The poll is less than a little under two minutes left to go. So cast your vote. And still, if you have any more questions or comments about our current topics, please tag at first updates now in the chat and we will try and read them off as much as we can. Uh, speaking of that, we have one from Jonathan Burton. This seems like a very big opinion. Grant, granted, we all have opinions. Um, they said the Detroit pizza was not that great. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you, if you're just saying if you ate Little Caesars, that's not probably Detroit pizza. I mean, <laughs> so pick something. I mean, that's a, yeah. And, and I, I've never been to either championship location, so this is actually really great for me. I, I, I'm very unbiased right here. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to go to at least one of them this year. Um, so do you guys have any other last-minute food things that uh, that you guys forgot to mention? Um, I know of, uh, sandwiches sound really good. Uh, barbecue like, sounds fantastic. You're able to get food at Detroit is really nice. Uh, mostly because like you have people who are working in the pits and who are working on scouting and like my scout leader and I were able to go in between matches and like grab actual food mm -hmm. and that was really really great for us right so my my personal thing here I, I'm going to award my point over to Houston uh, simply because just solely on barbecue so yes. I went to I went <laughs> I, so I went to I went to St. Louis in 2015 and 2016, and I miss Pappy's dearly. Pappy's and Sugar Fire. That was some of the best barbecue that I've ever had. And knowing that, I think this is probably like a true authentic thing. They opened up at like nine or ten o'clock, and they close when they just run out of food. You don't, I you definitely don't... miss Pappy's. In yeah. Texas is like the closest you're gonna yeah. get to Pappy's, but like. Yes, Pappy's was like on a whole other level. Right. And it looks like the audience agrees as well. A slim margin of 56% of the voters going over to Houston. Uh, we do have another uh. Uh, another thing from chat from one Bob, Bob Ziskinoff. I believe that's how I pronounce your name. Does the food really matter? We are all too busy working on robots and analyzing matches. I'm going to say <laughs> yes as a personal thing. So my team went down to Georgia uh, for the Gainesville district event last year, week one. And that's one of the things that we always try and do is try different food. Uh, like we had one student like, can we just go to Burger King after like after the event? We're like, no, like <laughs> let's get like Zaxby's or Church's Chicken or go to Waffle House because we don't have that in New Hampshire. And I, I can say that the staff at the Waffle House was not expecting us to roll in at 1130 at night. They never like do. Of us. Never do. And it was great. They never do. It was so good. I mean, you could call um, them just saying. We, you, you we, uh, we we realized that never prepared. we realized that as we pulled into the parking lot, and we we're like, "Well, let's just give our apologies right now." You should um, come to uh, North Carolina and do Bojangles because, yes, but it, Bojangles and Cookout those are like the two staple fast food places that are like like a North Carolina only kind of thing. I, I've per I've personally had. Bojangles and it, uh, it's not my favorite. I'm gonna be honest right there. I mean, it's it was just all breading for me the last time I had it. KFC is like the biggest presence in New England, with maybe a little bit of Popeyes there. We're we're not too much on the fast food. We're kind of boring on it. Yep. All right. So going into our fourth topic of the night, it is outside activities for teams. So when I had traveled to St. Louis in 2015 for the World Championship, 
we, uh, my team, 166, we spent an extra day sightseeing after championship. Uh, we obviously knew that going to the Arch and the City Museum was a must. And for teams that plan on spending some extra time either before or after the competition in the city, what are some of the cool places to check out? Any like hidden gems, other things that people just might walk right by? Uh, what are you thinking about that, Kristen? So you have number one, there's NASA. Number two, there's NASA. Number three, there's NASA. Did I mention that there's NASA? You've got Johnson Space Center right in your backyard. And it's totally easy to get a really quick, you know, Uber ride over to the space center. They usually have a discount during Champs Week, so if you've got a pretty large team, it's it makes it a little more affordable. And you can honestly spend all stinking day in uh, in in Johnson Space Center. They just re-renovated or restored, I guess, the uh, control room where they did all of the Apollo missions. And they put it basically in exactly the state that it was when we first stepped foot on the moon. And I don't think it's even remotely possible to top that. It is like the coolest thing ever. Like I said, call me biased. I work in the space industry, so I have my own opinions. But it's it, it was the coolest thing ever. The, the, the tour guides are really great. Um, if I remember correctly, they're also going to run the Artemis missions out of Johnson Space Center. So, you know, the center of human space flight right there. Uh, but the, the NASA facility, the Johnson Space Center, is it's it's a really good. They have a lot of really good documentation about, you know, when we first stepped foot on the moon, which we just celebrated the 50 year anniversary of. Um, so even I always see teams go there every year, and it's the coolest thing ever. I like they have a bunch of great tours. Um, I don't know. I'm I sound like a space nerd now, but yes, NASA. <laughs> Aren't we all, though? Oh, I love space. <laughs> all right, what do you got for us, oh, Audrey, yeah. over at Detroit? Any any fun things any over there? Space outside the competition. Uh, activities in Detroit narrow down to a few categories. We've got cars, we've got cars, and we've got car sick. As for getting there dirty early, <laughs> the Henry Ford <laughs> Museum. The Henry Ford Museum is an absolute must-see. It's an indoor and outdoor museum that focuses not only on Ford, but on innovation itself. And it's got cars and buses that your drive team can run through like the five-year-olds they want to be. Uh, there's a zoo sporting some acclaimed polar bears, which sounds very fun. Uh, the Detroit Art Museum with some awesome neoclassical stuff by Diego Ruggieria. And he's he's got some really cool paintings for Detroit there. Um, it's half price for students. And then there's the Michigan Science Center, which is just downright fun. During competition days, if you have downtime or you have a few seconds off, Detroit also has a host of really stellar strategy minds and FRC people giving talks and speaking just about all the time. In fact, if you've ever wanted to see Karthik's strategy talk live, Detroit is the only place that you can do that. All right. I mean, I, I love Karthik's strategy talk. I've been able to go see it a few times, uh, 2015 and 2016, and super knowledgeable stuff right there. And I love animals. So, like, the zoo is, like, my – that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little kid when it comes to animals. It's great. Uh, you said, like, polar bears and, and penguins and stuff like that. And I, that's probably one of my favorite things to do when I go to the aquarium in Boston. Aquarium, too. They mentioned you that, did, that one. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Hello. Oh, oh, there you go. Never mind. I'm sorry. Okay. Um also have an aquarium. Did you get that? Yeah, yeah aquarium. <laughs> yeah. Um so anything else that you guys have? Um so it just sounds like it's just NASA for Houston. But I mean, it's I NASA. Love, I, I, I mean, I know, but like, I love space, but there are some teams that probably want to do like some other things around there, right? Everything has a car guy. Like there, there's so many mechanical engineers that are car guys. Right. That is so for, true. Yeah. So for like, for cars, what, can you tour like Ford and General Motors and stuff like that? Or like what kind of car stuff in Detroit? The Ford Museum really goes into depth about kind of the history of how Ford started and like a lot of innovation that happened within Detroit. 
Um, there's a few like early models, of, like Model Ts and stuff, which is really cool to see. Um, and then they've also got like the Wright brothers, uh, where they worked in their workshop, kind of explain things, which is pretty cool. All right. Well, uh, while we while I discuss a little here, let's open up our poll for round four. Remember, chat. Uh, you can go to the top of the chat and you can select who you want to win this category, either Houston or Detroit. You have just a little under two minutes to do. That. And if you have any questions or comments, remember to tag at first updates now in the chat and we will try and read them off as much as we can before our next topic. So I'm a car guy myself. I love watching um, the Grand Tour and uh, Top Gear. Uh, the, but three three dudes out of London, uh, awesome car show went on for like what like ten fifteen plus years. But I also really yeah. really so love if space. If you're really into kind of the mechanics of how stuff works, they actually have um, they have one of the Saturn V rockets set up in the space center. You can actually go walk up. If anyone saw 118's reveal video, I think it was the uh, one they had last year. Yeah. Um, they, they actually, like, that is the Saturn V that they parked under, is the one that is on campus. Um, and they've they've got a lot of really cool, um, like, little display things that kind of explain, you know, this is the first stage, and this is kind of how long the first stage burn actually takes. Um, and then they kind of walk you through, like, how they actually get the capsule up into, you know, up into space and on its way to, to the moon. Um, They've also got little banners that kind of show you all of the different Apollo missions that they did. Um, kind of a little summary, who was on it, what happened, what it um, They also have a bunch of different um, exhibits of the actual rocket booster. Um, and it's really, really cool to actually walk up precision uh, mechanical work that went into putting these things together and designing them. Because you can also, you, I mean, you've got my brother's studying to be a, a um, plane mechanic, and he taught me about the safety nuts that they do, the safety wiring, where they actually drill a hole through the head of the nut, and they put wire through it and twist it in such a way to where if it ever did come loose, it would never actually come out. Um, so there's so instead of using you know Loctite, which may or may not do so well in the cold vacuum of space. Um, they, they had a lot of really cool engineering, you know, tricks up their sleeve to make all of it work and put it all together. All right. Uh, we do have one thing from uh, Bob Skinoff. Uh, Detroit also has events in city parks as well. And yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You just go hang out in the parks in Detroit and they have stuff that they're doing and it's just a lot of fun to see other teams there and interact with them as well. All right. Uh, Detroit Pop-Tart 66, uh, Rice Village in Houston is very pleasant to visit. Uh, what is Rice Village? I'm not sure. I had never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually stuck in innovation fair for most of the event until the evening. So. All right. But I usually get a day you know, before and after to actually go run around the city and, and do stuff. Interesting. All right. And uh, Red Leader uh, 342, uh, he looks like he cheered 200 bits um, for Detroit because of uh, Vroom Vroom race car. <laughs> All right. I agree. <laughs> so no, I, I, this one's hard for me because, I mean, there's there's a lot of things to do in Detroit, but also space. Um the I guess the way I see it is I mean, there's there's a yeah there's a lot of things to do in Detroit. You have so many different options, and like if some people on your team might not like space or some in Detroit or like some people might not like cars or zoos or science center. Uh, I'm sure everyone likes car thick. Um, if you don't, there's a problem. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with with Detroit on this one simply because of how much stuff there is to do, of what it sounds like. I mean, I I love space to death, and it looks like the audience couldn't make up their mind. It is Hyde. 
This is not Bro. something I was expecting. <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> interesting. I would so, like to see how how the split is between those that go to Houston, those that go to Detroit, and those that have been to both. Right. Yeah. That would be an, yeah, that would be an Damn interesting it. split. Um, so for that, because it is a dead tie, each uh, team, uh, Detroit and Houston, will each get one point for that. Uh, nobody's going home empty-handed this round as we go into round number five. It's called a world championship for a reason. And first is an international competition that pulls thousands of students and mentors from 20 plus countries. Uh, since moving to two champs, uh, the teams have been geographically divided. Orders are a real thing and we have to deal with it, unfortunately. Uh, but which one feels more like a world championship based on that international presence? Audrey, let me start. National culture is huge in Detroit for FLL and FTC. Europe, Eastern Asia, and South Africa have embraced these two programs a lot more readily than the FRC program for reasons that are probably like financial and whatever. Um, countries from 42 countries represent FLL in Detroit. Teams from 14 countries compete in FTC and there's like 50 FTC teams, FTC teams present. So that's a huge number out of them. The international experience of a world championship is still here in FRC as well. It just evens out more heavily for the FLL and FTC groups. As for international experience, Detroit is right across the river from Canada. And the city of Windsor is nothing to sneeze at. You can visit Canada if you want. And sometimes you will even accidentally visit Canada because your bus takes a wrong turn. But that's culture. Anyway, if you're in Detroit, Check out the international FLL teams. They're a great group of youngsters who come from almost every background and can and will tell you about how they're going to save the world. Um, just mentioning the map there that Tyler had pulled up, it's pretty evenly split along uh, the green, which goes to Houston, and the blue, which goes to um, Detroit. Uh, so it's just how it falls. FRC um, has more international teams that go to Houston. But if you're talking FLL and FTC, more teams go to Detroit. All right. Um, if you just want to brush up real quick there, how many FTC, uh, how many countries for FTC was it? 14. 14. And what about and FRC? 40, it's about six. Six. Okay. Awesome. All right. What do you got for Houston, Kristen? So in Houston, you definitely have a much better um, international presence on the FRC side for sure. Um, I've already mentioned Mexico, you've got Australia, and you usually have Israel, except for the weird occasions where they send Israel to Detroit. Um, but you, you definitely get a much wider percentage of teams that are from not North America. Because you do have Canadian teams in Detroit, but they're also North America versus in Houston, you have, you have other people from other continents um, kind of all over the globe. I don't remember where China goes, but I don't know if it matters this year because they're not going to be at either event, um, which is unfortunate. Um, China is Houston. Uh, so you, you definitely get, in terms of diversity of international population, you definitely get a much, much better range in Houston. Um, maybe not in just overall population that isn't US or is not, you know, not North America. Um, but I love visiting with the Israeli teams. They're always so excited to, to, to be there. Um, Turkey also goes to Houston, I'm pretty sure. Um, the, the Israeli teams, they always bring all kinds of, you know, Israeli flag, flag everything. Um, they're all just really excited to share their culture and share, share what they have. Um, they're, I mean, they, they're, they're the best group. One of the uh, CSAs that goes to both events um, is a good friend of mine. He's from um Ruben is from Israel so I I always love getting to meet up with him because he's on you know halfway across the planet I don't see him all the time um so definitely I think for FRC Houston definitely wins by a, several miles FRC but if you're talking FLL FTC junior FLL the, the countries even out and there's like a huge international presence for the FLL and FTC teams in um, Detroit. 
you get a lot of the uh, a lot of the European teams, or I think there are a lot of European teams. I've only walked the FLL pits a couple yeah. of times, but they do have, um, you know, there is there is some level of, of international presence in the other programs. It, it, it's like usually stuck it's in F huge. FRC. Yeah. That's the only one that I see on a regular basis, personally. Um, Mm -hmm. this is, um, let's be honest. Who, what are what are the shows that most people watch? It's FTC and it's FRC. FLO yeah. is kind of cool, but it doesn't get the world stage at the closing ceremony that FRC and FTC get. Right. Are Are there any even live streams of the FLO fields at Champs? Because I, I know there there is for FRC and FTC. I don't think so. Yeah, there is. There is. There is. I've, okay. I've seen them. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, like for me, for mostly, it's just I see my FRC friends throughout throughout the community. And more recently, I've been starting to pay a little bit more attention to FTC only because my team now, we have an FTC team at our middle school. Um, but I, I don't mm -hmm. really see, I mean, the FLL, they're just there because they're like, hey, this is kind of fun. You know, I mean, yeah, they might make friends, yeah. but their connections, I don't know. Um, FTC, there's a huge international presence, like 14 countries, um, and that's 50 teams for their two divisions. So there's 100 teams that go to jams, and uh -huh. that's like not a lot of teams. 14 different countries is pretty, pretty like it's it's pretty decent for the amount that actually get to go to jams because they have such a, a a tiered system with their super regionals and championships. Gotcha. We do have a thing from chat from pledge puff 2303 there are other world champs for fll aren't there um different no. levels um yeah. there's like the one that's in um detroit and houston are um they're like celebrations or something like that where they invite um sort of the FLO version of chairman's winners and they go to those um, competitions to show off their projects there are other kind of like super regional um, events where, and that's more robot focused, and those are across the globe. I think there's one in like Greece and a few in North America. All right. Uh, while we continue to talk more in stream, let's open up poll for the last for this last topic of the night. So Tyler has just put up the poll in Twitch chat. If you want to go to the top of your screen, you can vote for who you think won this topic on, of Detroit. international. Audrey says Detroit. Um, I mean, the, yeah. One of the things that I see, also, so I do a lot of t-shirt training, and one of the things that I see a lot of with the Houston trades is people wanting to trade for, oh, what is the name of the, the People will trade for literally anything from Australia. It's kind of hilarious. Um, like, people will trade, like, t-shirts or hoodies for, like, candy from Australia. Um, so you definitely get a good range of, you know, people like to bring all their, you know, foods from wherever they're from. Um, a lot of the Israeli teams bring a lot of, they bring flags, they bring, you've got the Israeli team scarves where they actually, uh, they get a custom scarf made every year that has every Israeli team that went to championship that year. Um, and it's like, it's really cool. I have the one from, from 2019. Um, you don't get that in Detroit unless Israel goes to Detroit. So... Personally, I think all the all the cool, fun goodies that, that people bring in is, is one of the cool aspects of, of getting the actual like global experience for FRC. Right. Uh, I, I I had an experience back in 2016 with a, with a t-shirt trade. It was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. I won't say what team it was, but I asked, I was like, hey, do you want to trade shirts? And the person just ripped the shirt right off their back and was like, here, have it. <laughs> like, do you, you, you got one that's maybe just a yeah. little bit cleaner? Um, it was like, this was towards the end of Saturday. So yeah, it's probably. been a long time. Yeah. yeah. And odds are they didn't bring enough clothes for the entire event. So they're probably wearing a shirt they already wore. You know, <laughs> high school students. I try not to think college. about that. I try yeah. not to. I mean, we, we supply small things of deodorant sometimes on our team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know who you are if you're on my team watching. Um, <laughs> Sorry for calling you out. Um, so it looks like our poll has ended. 
And that is kind of the same way that I am going as well. Um, I really like, I mean, I would love to be able to see all my friends from from Israel and Australia. I mean, especially it's like so the Heim- <laughs> I know, especially like the Heimlichs. I mean, they're they're from New Hampshire, and you don't, yeah. you don't get to see them often. Um, and Dean, even though uh, that uh, was over at nine seventy one, stole yeah. stole the Houston champs. Uh, so I'm gonna have to give my point over to Houston and chat. Uh, valid. <laughs> and uh, chat agrees as well, 71%. So there you have it. Uh, based on what I, what we have gathered here between our two guests, we have Houston coming four to seven. There are a lot of awesome things through, the, through Detroit, but it sounds like Houston just barely squeezed that one out. And we will go into our next item tonight, which is our trivia. Tyler, do you want to explain how we're going to do this? Yeah, so uh, here's what's going on, guys. We need uh, some people to jump in uh, to the call-in channel queue. If you're interested in playing trivia for a $15 Amazon gift card, we're going to have a couple uh, FRC questions, a couple Star Wars questions tonight as well, too. So if you're interested in that, (laughs) jump into the call-in channel queue. You're going to have just a minute to do that. Uh, once again, our Discord link is right there. We'd love to have you join us uh, for that. Uh, if we don't get anybody, we'll bank it and do it towards next time as well, too. I know it's getting late uh, with this as well, so we'll kind of play that by ear. But uh, with that said, before uh, we do that, as we're getting people want to give a big shout-out to our friends at Striker uh, for sponsoring this show. Guys, go to careers.striker.com forward slash first to find out a bunch of great things, summer internships, careers that are near you. Uh, just go in there. You can type right in there, internship. And you also get tons of awesome uh, potential internships all around the country. A lot of great ones around Kalamazoo, Michigan as well, too, I've been noticing. So go check that out. Striker's been huge for us. I just toured their headquarters quite recently, uh, and it is freaking awesome. Their new innovation center, it, 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 I thought I was stepping into Google, guys. It was so cool. Just uh, vastness, opening this. They, had a, they have an actually, you're talking about Starbucks before. They actually have a real Starbucks inside of their innovation center. It's none of that BS with like the... Uh, uh, fake Starbucks at Barnes and Noble crap that won't take my gift card. This is a real Starbucks that's in it that was going to take my gift card if I was going to do it. So super cool. Can't wait for that uh, uh, as well, too. And Connor, do you mind grabbing those uh, people, by the way? Uh, so yep. as we go uh, into that, Striker guys, go check it out. Once again, careers.striker.com forward slash first to find out great internships and careers and opportunities uh, with a company that actually supports you for being in first. So can't wait to have that as well. So we're gonna right, so, uh, we're gonna grab yeah. our caller. Uh, we'll make sure they're ready real quick. Actually, we'll just pull them right in. Why not? Um, so let's find out. Doctor Poptart, are you there? Uh, yes. Hello. Is your is your name really? Do- are you a doctor for real? I'm sorry. Are you a doctor? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> it, it says Doctor Poptart. This is false advertising uh, to start out with. But with what that said, uh, Doctor <laughs> Doctor Poptart, uh, what team are you on, man? Uh, well, I was, uh, I'm an alumni from Team 3345, and I've spent the past four years as a mentor for Team 1817 in Texas. Awesome, man. So, uh, with that said, we are going to start trivia. Here's how it works. We're going to ask that Connor takes off his headphones, doesn't look at Twitch chat or anything like that, and we'll uh, type in the Skype chat when Connor needs to get back. Uh, here's a goodbye, Connor. Bye. All right. <laughs> All right, so Connor's got his headphones off right there. Uh, five questions. You're gonna a- you're gonna answer them as quickly as possible on here. If you do not know, you can say pass, but none of this look it up on the internet stuff. We'll know if you do that. So, uh, so with that said, once again, five questions. If you give an answer, that's what we're gonna take. We're gonna ask. Uh, by the way, Audrey and uh, uh, Kristen, if you are in that trivia doc, if you don't mind, uh, if you can jot down the answers, I'd appreciate that as well. What are you in there? Okay, cool. Um, okay, so with that said, we're going to do the five, and then we'll uh, bring Connor back on and see if we can answer the same ones as well, too. So, uh, Mr. Uh, doctor, not a doctor, are you ready? Yes. All right. Here we go in three, two, one. What was the name of the 2013 First for Box competition game? That was Ultimate Ascent. What was the name of Star Wars Episode Six? Ooh, that is... Uh... Escaping me. Give me one sec. Don't, don't be That's... looking it up on here. Oh, I'm not. I'm yeah, not. Uh-huh. 
I have a mechanical keyboard, but you would hear it. All right. Um, you can pass if you want. I'm getting four and five, but I can't remember. All six. right, what, what do you I'm got? What do you need an answer? Pass. All right, pass. Uh, what is the correct name of the color wheel in Infinite Recharge? Oh man, I call it the Wheel of Fortune. Um, wheel of Fortune. Nope. Uh, what is the home planet pass. of the Wookies? That is also a pass. In Infinite Recharge, the generator switch is considered level if the rung is within how many degrees of uh, horizontal uh, uh, levelness? I should know this. <laughs> we just posted a video on this, by the way. Oh, I haven't seen it. I'm going to have to pass. All right. What is the name of Star Wars Episode Six? Um, You've asked me this already. Uh... Well, yeah, you passed, so we came back to it. Ooh. That's still a pass. All right. Uh, we'll give you one more. What is the home planet of the Wookiees? No, I still can't remember. I'm All right. sorry. In infinite pass. recharge, the generator switch is considered level if, if, if the rung is within how many degrees of horizontal? You know, I'm going to give it a guess and say... Uh... 15. 15. All right. Time. Connor! <laughs> Let's yell really loud to see if Howdy. he gets back. Hello. Hi. All right. Connor, no looking at chat, anything like that. We got the answers from uh, Mr. Dr. Not a Doctor here. I love your chat. Oh, thanks. There we go. Connor, are you ready? I am ready. Let's In do three, this. 3, 2, 1. What is the name of the 2013 First Robox Competition game? Uh, Ultimate Ascent. What is the name of Star Wars Episode Six? Uh, Empire Strikes Back. What is the correct name of the color wheel in Infinite Recharge? Uh, control panel. What is the home planet of the Wookiees? Uh, Endor. In Infinite Recharge, the generator switch is considered level if the rung is within how many degrees of horizontal? Uh, ten. Time. All right, Connor, you were definitely faster, uh, but we'll go through uh -oh. these answers one at a time on here. So, Dr. Nod, Doctor, how are you feeling? Um, not too confident, no. <laughs> That's right. For a $15 Amazon gift card, don't forget, if we, we don't do it, by the way, uh, it will go up to $20 for next time as well, too. So, all right, uh, questions, we'll go through it once again. What was the name of the 2013 First Robots competition game? Dr. Nod, Doctor said... Ultimate Ascent, so did Connor as well. It is 1-1. One, one. So congratulations on that. 1-1. One to one. What is the name of Star Wars Episode Six? Uh, our doctor friend here. I should call you by your real name. I'm sorry. Dr. Pop-Tart says uh, pass and then said pass again. Connor says Empire Strikes Back. It is Return of the Jedi. Ah. Return of the Jedi. Uh, what is the correct name of the con of the color wheel in Infinite Recharge? It's almost set there. Uh, we had a, a pass on there. You said he called it Wheel of Fortune, I think is what it was. Was that, was that what you said, right, Doctor? Uh, yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> All right. Uh, and Connor said Control Panel. Control Panel is correct. Two to one, Connor. Uh, what is the home planet of the Wookiees? Uh, Dr. Pop-Tart said pass. Unfortunately, pass again. Uh, and Connor said Endor. It is Kashyyyk. Ah, Kashyyyk. Ooh. Fox. It's a toughie. Yeah. And last question here. In Infinite Recharge, the generator switch is considered level if the rung is within how many degrees of horizontal? Dr. Pop-Tart said 15 degrees. Connor said 10 degrees. It is 8 degrees. Connor wins it, though. <laughs> Two to one. Congratulations, Connor. Uh, Dr. Pop-Tart, thanks for playing anyway. So our new gift card going up then to $20 at the next one. Uh, by the way, we do have a, uh, you can see the video on the uh, 8 Degrees. Uh, Corey from 2767 has that video, and you can go check that out uh, as well on Fun's YouTube. Awesome. All right, so before we end the show, uh, Audrey and Kristen, uh, what do you both have going on in your FRC lives right now? Let's start off with you, Audrey. Preparing for competition season, uh, doing the referee test sent from New York, and this year both in New York. Awesome. What about you, you, Kristen? So I've been babysitting the team. They they're actually working out of our garage. Um, 
So we, we, we've been doing some testing. So the first round of like full robot testing, um, things are going pretty well. Um, feeling really good about uh, competition season this year. Um, and we'll be, I will be volunteering in Dripping Spring as a referee. And then we will be going as a team to um, UNC Pembroke. We're going up to Portsmouth, Virginia, up in Chesapeake. Chesapeake and um, then we're coming back down home to um, hopefully state championship. And I will be championship um, representing analog devices. So come check us out at the Innovation Fair. Woohoo! Nice. Sounds like a lot of fun both of you guys have. All right. Uh, well, thank you for, to everyone who has watched. Uh, if you want more first robotics in your life, all and you like what, all is that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for more first in their lives. Uh, remember, fun is made for those who are in first by people who are actually in first. If you got a few bucks to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription through Twitch or Patreon, we appreciate it, but if not, uh, we totally understand and glad to have you on board. Since this is a pilot, we really would love your feedback so we can potentially greenlight this starting in May. So with that, Tyler, uh, let us know who stepped up with support during the stream tonight. Yeah, I want to give a big shout out uh, since our last stream that we had on here. Exalted one with the tier one sub seven months in a row. Uh, Elan Island 9421 person's <laughs> name I always say wrong every single time. I'm sorry, man. I remember it, then I forget it every time. But uh, 21 months of support. Thank you so much. Uh, Red Leader trying to start a bits war tonight. Come on, guys. you got to fight him a little bit there. Uh, coming in with a whole crap ton of bits. Thank you, Red Leader. Uh, coming in. I, I didn't have time to add it all up, but I think it was about 500 bits or so. Thank you so much, Red Leader342, uh, for that. Hey, it's Leo. 17 months of support. Thank you for that as well, too. Uh, and uh, Bob Zinkoff with a couple of bits as well. So thank you, everybody, for helping fund Stay it Loud, Live and Independent. We need your support to keep on doing that. So thanks again. We really appreciate it uh, to help us keep making great content. And pods like this, we try new things, and we'd love to hear your feedback on it. Awesome. And on, by, on behalf of myself and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you and for tuning in. And thanks to all of our moderators in chat for keeping things GP. We'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then. Yay, bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.